Hi, everybody. We are back once again. Four down, 12 to go for the Florida Panthers. He is Randy Moeller. I'm Steve Goldstein. Randy, we're going to get into this second round matchup, a rematch of the playoffs from a year ago. But first, let me start with a long layoff for the Panthers, obviously, for bumps and bruises. That's a good thing. Does it matter this time of year, good or maybe not so good when you have this much time off between series? I think it, early on in the playoffs, it's beneficial because the, the Panthers, like every other playoff team, has been a little nicked up. And to get some of their star players, that the guys that play the most with the heavy ice time, and Sergei Bobrovsky. You know Bobrovsky likes to work his worth e ethic and being on the ice. But I think mentally being off for a number of days is beneficial. And you talk about physically the Panthers – Go to great lengths. They've got a terrific uh, training staff, a sports science staff, very scientific of how many days they take off, how many days to skate, the rest as opposed to the work. I feel like that's money well invested by the franchise. Well, it is, and it is very scientific as far as the balance. You want to stay uh, sharp in your skills and the Panthers with their practices when they've been on the ice before the second round. They've been very sharp, and, and they've been very quick. And that, but you want to get the rest as well. And it's not only the physical rest, but it's the mental rest as, as well. I think the Panthers are ready. They're, they're very aggressive. Uh, they can't wait to get going here in this next round. Yeah, it really been a great situation. If you look at it, going back to the April 1st game in Boston, the Panthers haven't left the state of Florida. They finished up with the four-game homestand. They won all those games. Uh, actually, 9-1-1 one, and one in their last 11. And then, you know, the fairly easy travel with Tampa, this thing going into this next round. Randy, overall, with what, what was on the line, you go back to that game five about a week ago, I'm not sure I've ever seen Alexander Barkov play a better game than he did in that game five, including the third goal celebration. He was... I think Matthew Kachuk said he was like a man amongst boys in that well, game. Well, it's all about maturity and experience. And, and for Alexander Barkov, what he's gone through over some ups and downs in the recent playoff series going back a couple of years ago and that he's learned from that and to be able to balance from his responsibility you know he wants to shut down every centerman and every forward that he plays against but the balance of defense to offense he has perfected it now and you really saw as that series went on against the Tampa Bay Lightning especially game five he was totally dominant in that game both defensively offensively he wants to continue that trend he's going to be needed in the next round and then you got Kachuk with Barkov we really haven't seen that it was interesting to say Paul Maurice for that game five a week ago at Emirate Bank Arena had not one but two lineup cards in his pocket one with the way they started the game one with the way they finished the game and we've talked a lot Randy about Sam Reinhardt here's a guy now uh, 60 goals combined playoffs regular season and in the third period of the clinching game they basically tell him, hey, you're part of this crew that's going to shut down Stamkos, Kucherov, and Point, yeah. and there's no ego there. Sam Reinhardt says, fine, it's a defensive job now to close out a series. I'm all in with that. And he, and he still gets his points. He's still effective on the power play, and he still scores his goals. But that's the maturity of this whole hockey club, this Florida Panthers, and the confidence that they have in each other to take on certain assignments at the right time. Sam Reinhart has perfected it. And besides Alexander Barkov as the best two-way player in the NHL, Sam reinhardt has got to be in the top three. Yeah, he should be in the Selkie uh, board voting as well. And that center depth, I think an un... Kind of an unsung hero, if you will, of this season because of all the big numbers and all the big stars. Don't talk about Kevin Stenlin all that much, Randy. But with Bennett out, he steps in not only on the third line, but a career year for him. Really his first time in his career. He's played a full-time role, played a full season, good on the penalty kill, right hand, you know, face off, just the exact guy that Bill Zito and the hockey staff needed to sign. And then when you ask him in the playoffs to play more minutes, he comes up big. What does he mean to this team and maybe not overly discussed in public that much? Well, I, I think with, with uh, Kevin Stenlin, he knows his role here, and I think he's perfected at not stepping over his role. He's not trying to be Alexander Barkov out there or a Carter Verhage and play a speed game. He plays within those parallels of what makes him most effective. What is that? Winning the draws, playing strong, shutting down the centerman that he's up against, the penalty killing, the desperation, playing those important minutes at the end of a period or at the end of a game and that. 
he really thrives on that, and he's had so much success in doing that. I think he understands what his role is. He is in that spot and how valuable it is. And you know, as you've mentioned, that the coaching staff have praised him privately and publicly as well. And that's a good good, good thing for his ego. Yeah, unsung heroes, always fun in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Panthers have had a number of those, and we'll see starting in game one. It appears like they're going to roll out to start the game the way they finished against Tampa. We'll see how that certainly evolves. Coming up in this series, Randy, playing with the lead. In the Panthers, four wins in the last round. They trailed for a total of seven minutes and two seconds. How key is it for this team in particular to play with the lead? Yeah, well, it, it, you know, the, the statistics show that if you score the first goal, you're going to win, you know, 75, 80% of the time. And, that, and that's been true throughout the first round in the NHL this year. So it, it's not only getting the first goal, but it's establishing your flow. And the Panthers' strength is what we call the game flow. That's the breakouts. That is the speed through the neutral zone, uh, excelling on their forechecking, their back checking, and that. It's all about the flow going back and forth. And if the Panthers, if they can establish that uh, early on in games usually that leads to the first goal of the game and then once you get that first goal you're in the driver's seat and what happens is is you force the opposition to change the way that they have to play because now they're chasing the game all right randy let's get into this second round matchup again against the boston bruins they were teetering up three oh, one yes. they had to win the game seven at home now they got to, you know, get right in here to south florida go up against the panthers what'd you make overall of First of all, they win the first round, but the way they won the first round, it was teetering there for a while. Yeah, they, they're trying to find their team identity, and I think that it showed in that game number seven. They relied on their star players and, and the depth of the Boston Bruins and their goaltending and that, that prevailed. Now, will the Panthers see a different Boston Bruins team? I think they will. This team has changed a lot since the Panthers beat them last year in that playoff series in going to game seven. There's different personnel, and the way that they, they're coached by Montgomery, and they've got a different system that they're playing, but the Panthers have done their homework. They know what to expect, and I think they'll have the freshness as Boston comes in on not a lot of rest. They're going to be fatigued. Yeah, what did you see? You know, Toronto had some stretches in that series where they were all over the Bruins. The Panthers, obviously, uh, the number one four-check team in the league. Uh, they do all their homework already, but do you think maybe there's something there that Toronto specifically did that the Panthers can take advantage of in the well, series? But Boston Bruins, their strength is puck possession. Pasternak and all their star players and Charlie McAvoy coming in from the point and carrying the puck up the middle of the ice, Toronto really took that away from them. It was more of a Toronto in that series, but Boston now, the Panthers know with the pre-scouting, they have to control the puck. You want the puck on Barkov's stick, on Lundell's stick, you want it on the star players. And I think the Panthers, they have an edge in this series because the Panthers' defense are much more mobile when you talk about bringing the puck out of their own zone with Montour and Gustav Forsling and Ekblad. They can all, Oliver ekman Larson, Kulikov, they, uh, they can all carry the puck. That is the advantage that the Panthers have over the Boston Bruins going into this series. All right, last year in that first round series, I thought some of the great moments in Panther history and great moments in the Amarant Bank Arena history. There's one, there's a couple moments on the road in that series, so let me just play a little, little game with you. Okay. Alex Lyon winning game two in Boston. Matthew Kachuk in overtime in Boston. Sergei Bobrovsky save on Marshan in Boston to save the series and the season. I got a couple more. The Dolpy goal in game six. Correct. The Los Durinan goal in game six. Montour ties game seven. I mean, it's amazing how many moments there are. Verhage wins game seven. Randy Moeller, you got to pick one moment. What's your favorite moment from the series last year? The favorite one that, that really turned. Do you remember all those, by the way? I do remember okay. all of them. The, the, the one that stands out is the Kachuk with the overtime winner and taking that puck and saying, boys, we're, we're coming back here for game seven. The game five overtime That's goal. game five overtime. Okay. Boys, remember this. 
We're coming back for game seven. And everybody was like, whoa. This, this guy's got some guts. He, they, but he proved it. He, he put it on the ice, and Kachuk was the Panthers' best player overall in that series with those big goals and this physicality and the way he really intimidated with his physical style of the Bruins. You know that Chuck E. Cheese is going to be ready to go once they drop the puck in game one. Yeah, and he scored a big goal in game six as well, that right. wild game, I remember. So just so you know, folks, we haven't told this story when – Marshan's coming down and you're like, oh gosh, I'm looking up at the clock and I'm thinking, is he going to beat the clock and we're doing the game? And if he scores, the series is over. Bobrovsky makes the save. We're going overtime. We throw it to the studio. I remember taking the headset off. We looked at each other and I said to you, oh, it's on now. Now we got a series, and sure enough, Kachuk got that goal. It was, it was some. That's a series that's going to live on forever in people's minds. Isn't yeah, it? and I think the Panthers going to uh, going to need that a little bit more. There's got to be individual efforts. I mean, we haven't even discussed Carter Verhage and some of the huge goals that he has scored so far in this year's playoffs against the Tampa Bay Lightning. If the Panthers are able to get Bennett back in this series at some time, Lundell, who's going to be the star in scoring the uh, supplementary goals from the defense? Is it Brandon Montour? The Panthers have an opportunity to dominate on the power play here because of Tarasenko that they've added as well on that second unit. It is going to be a, a, a series where the Panthers have the individuals and the talent to make the difference on a game-by-game -game basis. All right, keep it on all your Panthers social media cha uh, channels for all of our coverage. We look forward to it. Round number two coming up. Thanks for watching. See you there.